Greetings, I'm Jonathan Spear, and I love Steve's Factory Manager, and welcome to Age of Engineering Super Shorts. Unfortunately, there's no working Steve's Factory Manager for this version of Minecraft, but there are substitutes like RF Tools Control. And now that I've learned RF Tools Control, it's what I'm going to use to automate the docking station from Calculator and the Empower from Actually Additions. To start with, I'm going to need lots of card bases. These require cactus green, but there are no deserts beside me. There's one very far away, but since I'm not in the mood to go all the way over there every time I need some cactus green, I'm going to automate it. For that, I'm going to use the Garden Cloche, introduced in the latest update of Immersive Engineering and Age of Engineering. Three basic greenhouses, three Garden Cloches. I'll place my three cloches here, because power comes in through the top, put a piece of sand in each, give each one a cactus, add an ender tank to fill them up with water, and watch them go. The orange hatch from the cloche is the only way to extract items. But Ender IO conduits won't even attach. I tried many different sides. However, the cloche does auto output, so I just auto output it into these three different chests from Dark Utilities. And it's all getting inserted into these storage drawers. Now that I have Cactus Green automatable, I can start on RF Tools Control. I'm going to start with just automating the first two calculators. I'll need a pro six card bases, a processor, two nodes, and a crafting station, a network card, two CPU cores, and a crafting card, two docking stations. I'll place two nodes right here with two docking stations on top. These nodes will allow an RF Tools Control processor to communicate with machines that are beyond its direct reach. I'll set the nodes to channel Calculator, and I'll call this one Basic, this one Scientific. I'll make two calculators. I'll put one of these calculators in the conductor mass to create a scientific calculator. And I'll right-click on a docking station with a calculator to dock it. Now when I open up the docking stations, I get the inventories for the calculators. I'll place my processor down here, with a chest on either side, and I'll add my two CPU cores and network card. I'll also place down a crafting station. I'll run the console command net setup calculators so that the processor can find the nodes. I'll place down my programmer and start programming. I've already done a lot of testing, so here's the program I created. The program will repeat every second. It will check each slot of the basic calculator for items, and if there are no items, then it will move on to the next check. RF Tools Control reads the docking station as having six slots. Slots 0 through 3 are the inputs, and slot 5 is the output. If it so happens there's at least one item in the output, the program will pull the items from the output and put them into the chest on the east. Note that you can only extract from the bottom or the top of a docking station. If there are no items in any of the slots, the program will run the Get Ingredients Smart command. This will check a card inventory, which is the inventory that contains the crafting cards. For a crafting card whose result is reinforced stone, I'll program that crafting card now using wood, cobblestone, and reinforced stone. Now the crafting card says item reinforced stone, so when the program looks for it, it'll find it. After this operation finds out the ingredients it needs from the crafting card, it makes sure that all the items are in the input inventory and puts them into the defined slot range inside of the processor. If it doesn't have them, it does nothing. Next up, check ingredients, looks for the card, finds out the ingredients needed, and checks the proper slots to see if the inventories are there inside of the processor. If they are, it returns a true value. This tests if it returned a true value or a no value at all or a false value. If it returned a true value, it goes up the wires. Then it takes the item from slot 0 inside of the processor and puts it into the west side of the docking station. It will put slot 1 into the east side. The docking station, if it has a basic calculator inside, takes the first slot from the left side and the second slot from the right side. If the check ingredients return false, which in this case is no value at all, it'll go up these wires to another Get Ingredients Smart and go through the same process. This prevents two Get Ingredients Smart from going in succession. If they go into succession and both are inputting into the same range of slots, the second Get Ingredients Smart ingredients will be deleted, which is why this program is so much more complex than it could have been. Only two program cards, one for the scientific calculator and one for the basic calculator. I'll place one program card here and save it as basic. Now I'll go to the processor and allocate slots for a certain card. I can click on slots to make them available to that card, and the slots I picked are numbered relative only to already selected slots. I'll only need two slots for this program. When I'm done, I can press the resource allocation button again to exit. Oops, I got an error. Looks like I forgot to change something from my original version of the program. In my original program, I had crafting cards in a chest on top of the basic node, but now they're directly on top of the processor, which the parameter now reflects. No more errors. Now, with an importer on the output chest and an interface on the input chest, when I put in wood and stone, I should get reinforced stone in the output chest and then into the AE system. I have crafting cards for reinforced stone, enriched coal, reinforced iron ingots, reinforced stone bricks, and enriched gold. I've modified my program for the scientific calculator. Everything basic has been turned to scientific. And I'll craft purified coal and energy modules. And I'll save it as scientific. And I'll make sure to allocate two new slots for it. Notice there's still 0 and 1. And add it in. 
I'll add the crafting cards in a bit. I have two CPU cards, so both programs can run at the same time. Energy modules and purified coal are now stored. Let me just see if I can fix this error. After I did a lot of testing, I discovered that it was the presence of this empty crafting card that caused it. Why it caused it is beyond me, because it didn't make any problems for any of the other programs, but it did, so I took it out. Here's my system for the atomic reconstructor. This interface is hooked up to an automatic precision dropper, constantly dropping onto a pressure plate. When there are items on the pressure plate, the redstone signal triggers a knock gate. And when the rest of the signal is off, the atomic reconstructor can run. Instead of implementing a delay, this system flows naturally. Items fall quickly enough from the dropper that we don't have to worry too much about wasting RF. All six crystal blocks are now automated. In preparation for Empower Automation, I've done a lot of other things. I automated display stands by also automating aesthetic blocks. I added all the extra coal dust, and then automated enriched coal, enriched gold, purified coal, and energy modules. But when I wanted to automate the single battery, I hit a problem. Though it asked for an uncharged energy module, AE2 would not craft the battery unless the module has some energy in it. That's why there's two energy module recipes here. The second recipe inserts the uncharged energy module into this energizer, which I already had, and extracts a charged energy module. Then I automated the empower. Why? To make six of them. My plan is to automate a modular empowerer. That means any recipe you put into the system will go into whatever empower is free. And of course I'm going to do it with RF Tools Control. I'll need two different processors, each with an advanced network card. Five CPU cores in this one, and four in this one. I'll bring my program over here temporarily and copy in my program. This program is modular. You need one for each Empower recipe you're going to program. It repeats every five seconds. These first five fetch item opcodes get one of each item you need for the recipe and put them into the designated processor slots. In order to change the recipe, you only need to adjust these five. This evaluation opcode checks if there's an item in the first Empower. Each of the six Empowers is marked by a node, which designates which number it is. If the number of items is not greater than zero, the processor takes the items from its slots and puts them into each slot of the empower. Each display stand node is marked with two numbers. The first number designates which empower it's connected to, and the second number designates which stand it is for that empower. If there's an item in the first empower, it checks the second empower, and then the third, and then the fourth, and then the fifth, and then the sixth. And since the very first thing it does is push an item into the empower block rather than the display stand, it is highly unlikely that the system will try to insert two different recipes at the same time. I'll place the payless card into the processor and give it five slots of its own. I've just copied all the program cards from my test world. This simple program extracts the items from all the empowers. Now that everything is programmed, I'm going to start assembling the empowers. I place these nodes so that they have a top side. And after setting their names, I place the empowers on top of them. And I'm adding the next five nodes. Now all the empowers are placed. And I place down the processors and adjusted the programs based on the sides they need to input from. With an interface and an importer. This is by far the messiest thing I've ever created in this playthrough. And I have no plans to fix it. My only hope for salvation will be to clear up this room of everything else inside of it, which I'll do eventually. Next up, automation of everything required for empowered blocks. For cobalt and ardite, I ran ore into the sag mill, set up recipes that converted only two powder into two ingots, so that I wouldn't waste types with powder. For rose red, I set up a beetroot farm. Beetroot always produces two seeds per harvest in the cloche, but only one beetroot. I didn't want my system to get filled up with beetroot seeds such that it couldn't harvest beetroots anymore, so I put a void upgrade on the beetroot seed drawer and left the beetroot drawer alone. Beetroot can be crafted into rose red. To set up the recipe for ender shard, I used a full durability glass cutter with ore dictionary substitutions allowed. What about red garnets? Can't get them from the implosion compressor because I don't have access to that yet. But you can get them when you break ruby ore. So I have a silk touch miner right here that breaks the ruby ore and gets out a red garnet. For payless, I set up a prismarine reconstructor recipe. For fish, I set up some Axley Editions fishing nets with chests on top. These are set to extract only fish. I'll automate peat another day. In order to automate vanilla white, I'm removing silk touch from this miner because I'm fairly certain you don't actually need silk touch to harvest red garnet. Lithium I automate as a batch to prevent more tiny piles of lithium dust in my system. Emeratic is easy as I already have all these items, though I did transfer some broccoli from my circuit extraction system into a drawer. For snow, I have here a wintry bee. I'll put an apiary here with an item conduit set to self-feed. This item filter will be filtered on wintry drone, and while this item conduit will have a priority of two, this one will have a priority of one. This item filter on the chest will be filtered with wintry combs, and this system should continue forever. The necrotic bone will come once I have Ender I.O. automation. I'm crafting bronze using bronze dust, which I'm crafting from copper and tin dust. Bronze large plate is the other recipe I had planned for the smeltery. These transfer nodes are filtered. Now I can program the first recipe. As always, I have to run the recipe once to get the product, so let's watch it go. Boom. And it's done. And that's it for today's episode. Next episode, I'm going to automate the RF Tools powered spawner for Inksac and machines and recipes from the farming age onward. I'm getting pretty close to filling up 18 molecular assemblers, and I've only just finished the Empower Age of Automation, so I have a lot left to go. I'll be sure to paste spin the code in the description. And as always, I'd love feedback on what I do. I hope you enjoyed!